Well, a couple of willing railway modellers have sorted out my latest problem, but I've got another couple of problems too. Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie. In the last video, I mentioned how, how the problems I had with trying to get this track to turn in from the viaduct um, into the old Chadwick, Chadwick TMD layout. And I had a great response. People were coming up with all sorts of suggestions of how I could try it. Some of it was reconfiguring some of the Chadwick TMD layout. Um, but one of the, the, the ideas I went for, which I, I thought was fascinating really, and I, I can't f figure out for, help, for love nor money why I didn't think of it, probably not that clever, is was to bring the, the viaduct away from the wall so it doesn't run parallel. And this would have two clear advantages. For starters, being as it's not parallel, it adds an extra dimension of interest um, to this particular board. And also, because now we've got a bigger gap here, we've already started the turn uh, into Chadwick itself. So um, these rails now don't have to have quite such a severe turn on them. The main up and down line, which feed the, uh, the 12 track fiddle yard, remain unchanged. They'll simply go around the back. But here, I can now run straight off this, uh, this point, well, it's coming the other way, coming straight from Chadwick uh, into this point here with, without any severe um, curves. And uh, with an, a new idea was actually when you come off the upline through the crossing and then along this track here, we'd run in to the back of Chadwick where the old um, tanker line used to be. So that siding then becomes uh, part of a through line. So this track that comes around here would simply come straight out, we'll make a hole there and come straight out into this siding, straight along the front um, of the wall and out the other end. And also then this is the main line coming back out uh, onto that left hand point. Makes sense. To get away from this huge hillside, what I thought I would do is move this uh, scenic break and bring this one right back and then these sidings then can have more depth and more sort of railway interest. So the hill won't be as big, um, but scenically I can then add uh, to this area of Chadwick and expand this a little bit. What I'll do next is I need to get rid of this, um, this back scene plinth here, get rid of that, and I'll remove this and then swinging around to uh, the main junction, what I now need to do is construct the timber frame that will kind of go um, underneath this area. So I've made a template and it's time to start sawing bits of wood to make it all up. I've done the first piece and that is here and that's how it will kind of fit in and that's the kind of shape it has to be. So that will carry those three tracks up that way and this one around here and then it will go into the uh, the tunnel mouths that will go on those sides and then all I need to do now is think about the scenery and obviously make a way of holding this up and of course installing the point motors which will switch these two points. Hmm. 
Some people don't like to use set track. They think it's some kind of a second class piece of rail. But um, clearly it doesn't look as nice as flexible track, I totally agree. But where, in, like in this case, it's out of the way and you can't see it, why wouldn't you use, why wouldn't you use something so it's got a perfect curve on it? So that kind of makes sense to me. And this is where this first line now will join up to the old Chadwick. I removed the, the rock face wall and now I can move that back into position which kind of, it could go in that kind of area there, which would uh, open all this expanse up to make more of the yard. Um, and without filling it full of uh, tracks, so you could, I can make more of a scenic element with it, with vehicles and, um, and buildings and that kind of thing, rather than just stuff it full of trains. Over here now, I've completed both of these archways. Admittedly, 12 mil ply um, tends to be a little bit uh, over-engineered. There's also the second one here, which is tucked into this corner, again, uh, a 12 mil ply. And so what I need to do now is cut back some of the track that goes into that curve for the new track then um, to get a good join before it hits this, uh, this the, the embankment and then into the um, viaduct. So I get a good join over there. Um, and I've obviously got to lay all the cork and wire up this separate board. And this is ideal now because I can take this section here out, um, wire up these uh, two points and the point mode is underneath and then ins insert it as, as one product and then uh, a small piece of rail then um, to bridge across from the viaduct um, into this sort of bridging structure. What I've always hoped to do is when all that bit's kind of done but I'll remove it again is to take this board out, lay it down on a table, and I can do all the scenics then away from the confines of this area. Um, so I'm not going to make a huge amount of mess because the last thing I want to do is start putting um, uh, paper mache and filler and everything else onto the back scene. And also, um, most of the viaduct won't be in place um, when I do that piece. So um, I shall put the cork down and the cork on top of the viaduct, um, wire the, the points up, get all that section right, uh, move it away and then take this board out. Um, as you can see, there's a small piece of balsa underneath um, the viaduct and uh, in true fashion, I made a mistake. We, the, the viaduct was kind of a quarter of an inch too low, but I deliberately put it in a little bit too low so I could bring it up to the right level rather than find that the viaduct was too high with the other two boards and I'd have to start cutting down the piers. So that's where I am now. Well, a couple of days have now gone by and I've um, almost finished um, this bridging section. The cork's on, the track's on, and the two tortoise point motors are in. And while I mentioned these tortoise point motors, I thought you might want a, a closer look. So these, like cobalts, are slow action point motors. They're not solenoids, they don't go with a thud, they go as more of a whir. And as you can see, there's, as I've got, um, five cables connected to each of these two. And the outer two cables, which I've coloured blue and yellow, are to make the, um, the point motor run. And the other three cables, the green one is the, um, the frog, and the red and black are from the track feeds. So when the, when the point motor uh, changes over, it changes the feed, let's say from the black cable onto the green or the red cable onto the green, so the frog is the, quick, is the correct way switched around. Now before I install these, it's clearly worth giving these a test. What I tend to do is just simply get the old nine volt um, what do you call it, smoke alarm battery out, pop it on there, and you can see the point motor turn over. And if I turn it back the other way, it will run back the other way, and you can test them prior to installation. Um, they are stall motors, that is as much as they will, you always leave power applied. It's not like the solenoids where you just give it a burst. So that's that one tested, and where's the other one? 
As per usual, you may think I've gone over the top with the cable quantity, and you're probably right, um, but I wanted to get these fed indi individually um, because it won't be that easy to access these point motors and the cabling once it's all in place. So these kind of work perfectly. However, there is a great drawback with them, and that is their expense. These, for 12 of these, the cheapest I can find in the UK, is £190. And we'll touch on this a little later. So here they are in place, and you can see if I move my finger across, you can see the, um, the springingness, as it were, of these point motors. When you buy them, it comes with like a piano wire and it's um, putting a, a micrometer on it. It's 0.6 of a millimetre, and I really don't know what that is in old money. Um, but it was suggested to me at a model railway show that actually you use one mil piano wire. And in true carelessness, when I bought these point motors, I lost one of these wires. So when I wired these up, I actually fitted um, one of these one mil uh, wires and the difference is quite uh, quite pronounced obviously you can't feel this but it's quite springy but this one here is very very springy and this is an advantage again away from solenoid point motors that this keeps a great deal of pressure on the uh, switch blades onto the onto the rail rather than having any gaps um, but when you install them you do need to remove the point uh, sorry yeah the point uh, spring um, so that the um, point motor doesn't have to fight against it. And there should be a video link here um, going back into how I, um, how I sorted out my point motors. I'd also modified these points um, prior to installation by cutting the small wires that are underneath um, these sections here and then um, doing some soldering underneath these two wires um, so that we don't necessarily rely on the switch blade against this rail here um, giving electrical continuity, um, but you can actually do it by bridging um, across these two rails. And hopefully there's another video link here um, to show you how I've done that in the past. So here we are with the tracks kind of just tacked in place. The profiles aren't quite right, but I think you can get the general idea. The tracks coming over from the bridge and that section's all finished, just needs uh, securing to that, um, what should we call it, the Scenics baseboard. I've got some uh, foam, that's not foam, I've got some cork to uh, obviously to glue down on that uh, on the board there and then sort out the profiles of these two lines that run into the old Chadwick and there's that line running into um, the old uh, fuel, fuel unit which comes down there on the, on the bottom and then the other line which is the kind of up line will go straight through and then join up uh, over there onto that bridge section. And looking from the other side, if I just replace the, um, the arch section here with a retaining wall, um, and then hopefully you can see then that this is where my uh, goods line will come through, and then the tankers then can reverse back into this siding here um, and deal with the tanker traffic. Turning my attention to the fiddle yard, Ideally, what I wanted to do was have 12 tracks. So there's six on the up and six on the down. And looking at the, the up line, so this would be at the far end of the fiddle yard, I'd have a medium radius point coming in, and then this would be the main through line. And then obviously these, then these um, tracks then would be, become shorter as the lines go down. Now I think it's known as a ladle, ladder fiddle yard. And then I'd put um, I've sized it up with small radius points uh, going down there. And what I didn't realise is between, uh, obviously you get long, medium, long, medium and short radius points, but whichever ones you use, then it changes the distance between these fiddle yard tracks. Now on the other side, I've put six points sorry, five points giving six tracks, the same as on the other side, but this time they're all medium radius points. And as you can probably see, they need an extra uh, five inches worth of room because obviously they're slightly longer. But not only that, the fact that these tracks here are two inches at two inch centers, whereas on the 
a short radius, they're at one and three quarter inches. So naturally, you can get more for your dollar if you like. You can get more tracks into the same into a, the same amount of space if you use first radius or so short radius points rather than medium radius points. It's kind of quite obvious, but I'd never paste it out to look. And obviously, in my fiddle yard, if I want six tracks each side, i.e., twelve in total, and I've only got a limited amount of room, then I must use um, short radius points. And I've got a few short radius points. Um, I think they're all electrofrog, which is uh, useful. And obviously these other um, second radius points, which have come off different layouts in the past and I've acquired or whatever from shows, then I'll just put to one side and I'm sure they'll come in use in the future. But it's just an interesting point of view that um, you can get more for your money if you use shorts. And if you were to use long radius points, obviously, you'd um, have even larger gaps uh, between the rails. And these rails can go quite close together because the pass, there's no passing trains, there's no curves, they were just, they're just you know, running parallel to each other, so there's no chance of collision. Um, but a point of interest, I thought. So even I can do this sort of simple maths. So to go from one track to six, you need five points. So I need five, ten, and at the other end, another 10. So that's 20 short radius electro frog points. It gets more and more expensive. But that's not the end of it, because I have a preference to tortoise point motors. But they are incredibly expensive. But I don't want to hear the thudding of these points changing as my nice sound locos, because it's all about the sound for me, really. It's, you know, that's an, an added area of realism. And the, the, all the work I've done up to now is been in tortoise point motors because of their quiet nature, because, they, you know, they're, a, um, they're not a solenoid motor. But I really can't stretch to buying 20 tortoise point motors. Because you have to be looking at something around 300 pounds um, just for those and um, that's an incredible amount of money whereas I've actually got quite a lot of the old Pico um, and some seep point motors um, both I've ripped off this layout and um, I've acquired through shows or whatever um, so that's the dilemma I'm in so if you know of anyone with uh, what selling point motors that are cheaper than 190 pounds for 12 then please leave a comment or just send me a private message because I hate someone else to beat me to them such is life. So that's the uh, that sums up where I am with the um, with the uh, fiddle yard. It's all straightforward. I mean, nobody needs to see me nail down a piece of track and stick a bit of uh, a bit of cork down. So that's all straightforward. So where does my focus go now? Well, I could obviously get on with that fiddle yard, but what I'd like to do um, is to crack on with this board here. Um, and I mentioned previously, I want to take it away from the wall, um, take it out into the room a little further so I don't damage that back scene with paper mache and all the rest of it. There's some weathering to be done on the track prior to being installed, and that will again be done um, with a, an airbrush prior to it being um, stuck down onto the cork. So again, we're just trying to minimise the damage that I could possibly cause, and rest assured I've caused some in my time. I can glue down the two wooden sections, then just lift out the um, the archway and then I can get around to gluing down the four uh, piers. The idea is to have a river running through the centre and on either side of the valley what I wanted to do was have a small road running down and then over a small, um, what would you call it, a small old, oldie looking um, stone bridge uh, in the foreground so you have a kind of a, a better depth of scale of what's going on. And I've searched around and I can't really find a decent um, stone bridge. Um, I'm off to um, the Alexander Palace show at the end of this month, so hopefully I can find one there. Unless, of course, you've got a better idea and you can propose one. Um, but um, I'm sure between us we'll find, uh, we'll find something suitable. Um, and if I see you at the Alexander show, please come over and say hello. Um, you know, I'd like to you know, shake your hand and say thanks for supporting the channel, um, which would be great. 
Um, so there we go really, I think that kind of sums up today and in my usual f style then there should be a uh, subscribe button just down there and particular thanks to my patrons um, who helped me out, I, I, I really really do appreciate your generosity and there's a link there and there should be a video there and there and in the meantime I'll see you at the next one, take care, thanks a lot, bye bye.